guys, it's Quinn here. If you appreciate my content, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm notices me. The Dune universe is set in the year 10191 AG. This is about 20,000 years in our future. The Spacing Guild was formed after 10,000 years of history, following the 20th century. The Guild was formed after a long age of darkness following the Butlerian Jihad. In this age, no one could travel safely through space due to the inability to use thinking machines. One in every ten vessels were lost in this age due to the inability to properly navigate during this era. When the guild was formed, this problem was solved, and a new epoch was created. A.G. After Guild. Following the ascension of Paul Atreides, more than 5,000 years passed over the course of the original Dune Saga. By the year 13500 AG, the Worm God Emperor Leto II rules from Arrakis, which by then was simply known as Rakis. The God Emperor, more so than anyone who had lived before him, understood that recorded history was riddled with inaccuracies, half-truths, and outright lies. The history of humanity was shaped by those who recorded it. The stolen journals would be Leto's own record of his long life, his family history, and his musings on the universe, humanity, and reality. In the centuries following the death of the Worm God Emperor, several volumes of his journals were uncovered, and as they were uncovered they shed new light on historical events. It was in fact the Spacing Guild who originally translated the stolen journals through a method which came to be known as the Guild Key. Most of the journals had been originally printed upon Radulian crystal sheets by use of a device called a Dictatal, which allowed the God Emperor to transmit his thoughts directly. The Dictatal was a device of Ixian manufacture. Ixian tech was frowned upon in the Imperium due to the fact that the Ixians towed the line of what was permitted by the Butlerian Jihad. Leto had recorded his thoughts through the use of the Dictatal for many centuries. He even recorded his dying thoughts. No one denies the antiquity of the Guild Key, and it alone translates these volumes. Second, these volumes were printed by an Ixian Dictatal of truly ancient make. The stolen journals leave no doubt that this was in fact the method employed by Leto II to record his historical observations. The book, God Emperor of Dune, opens hundreds of years after the death of the God Emperor. By this point in history, several of his journals have been discovered and translated, but new journals have recently been uncovered. These new journals contain the story of the fourth book in the Dune Saga. It is not only my pleasure to announce to you this morning our discovery of this marvelous storehouse containing, among other things, a monumental collection of manuscripts inscribed on Redulian crystal paper, but I also take pride in giving you our arguments for the authenticity of our discoveries, to tell you why we believe we have uncovered the original journals of Leto II, the God Emperor. The newly uncovered volume of Leto's stolen journals opens with the line, I assure you that I am the Book of Fate. In this line, the God Emperor is referring to how within him he contains all of humanity, and how through his near unshakable power of prescience, he alone steered the fate of all humans. He is the Book of Fate and Destiny as far as humankind is concerned. At the start of the narrative, several volumes of Leto's journals are stolen by Siona Atreides, a descendant of Paul Atreides and the most recent product of Leto's breeding program. She believed and would ultimately be proven correct that the key to his destruction was within the journals. In reading God Emperor of Dune, it becomes even more clear that much of what is obvious to the reader is not necessarily obvious to the inhabitants of the Dune universe. Throughout the books we see largely through the eyes of superhuman characters like the Bene Gesserit, 
these characters have a high level of perception and access to information that average humans do not. By the time of God Emperor of Dune, much of the truth about Leto II's origin is shrouded in myth and obscured by the mist of time. The details and the nature of his metamorphosis into the Worm God Emperor are not widely known. Within the stolen journals, Siona Atreides uncovers that Leto was in fact capable of love. She realizes this when she uncovers a section of the stolen journals written before Leto's metamorphosis had fully set in, back when his musings were inscribed upon regular paper, impossibly ancient. Siona leaned over the table and read, A strand of Ganima's hair with a starflower blossom which she once brought me. Looking up at Nela, Siona said, Our god emperor is revealed as a sentimentalist. That is a weakness I had not expected. Ganima? Nela asked. His sister! Remember your oral history. Oh. Oh yes. The prayer to Ganima. Now listen to this. Siona took up another sheet of paper and read from it. The sand beach as gray as a dead cheek. A green tide flow reflects cloud ripples. I stand on the dark, wet edge. Cold foam cleanses my toes. I smell driftwood smoke. Again, Siona looked up at Nela. This is identified as words I wrote when told of Ghani's death. What do you think of that? He... He loved his sister. Yes! He is capable of love. Oh yes, we have him now. Siona understood that love was a weakness, a weakness she could exploit. This would be the same weakness the Ixians would exploit with the creation of We Nori. Leto did what he did not only to save humanity from itself, but to save humanity from a powerful threat that he foresaw in the future. An enemy with the potential to end all of humanity forever. Because of how he subjugated mankind, he went down in history as the greatest tyrant who ever lived, leaving a scar across the face of humanity that would stand forever as a lesson never to offer away your freedoms to charismatic leaders. From the perspective of many, perhaps most, Leto would be known as a tyrant and only a tyrant. The truth of who he really was and his sacrifice for all mankind would remain the secret of the journals for many centuries. To save humanity, Leto was condemned to 3,500 years of torment within the worm body, never to know human touch. Tormented by the wisdom of his other memory and the boredom and the responsibility that it alongside his prescience brought. Dune Part 2 just hit theaters. I've seen it several times already. Something hit me while watching it for the second time. Both Dune Part 1 and Dune Part 2 open with a booming voice, giving a quote in some future language. It sounds similar to the language that they use for the Sardaukar in the movie. The two quotes are, Dreams are messages from the deep, and power over spice is power over all. What if both of these quotes are actually the voice of the God Emperor? He would know and speak every language known to man, and both of these quotes sound exactly like things he would say. In fact, in a way, he is the physical manifestation of both of these quotes. Dreams are messages from the deep could be a reference to the sea of humanity that lives within him. In the book, he can literally dream and live the life of his ancestors. The power over spice quote is obvious. Leto's body literally produces spice and he ruled over spice distribution with a harder grip than anything ever seen before in the Imperium. He was essentially all-powerful. So if it is true that these quotes are the voice of the God Emperor, that seems to imply that the story of Dune as presented in Denis Villeneuve's cinematic universe could actually be from the stolen journals. Now this of course is just a theory and there is not really much evidence for it, but it's a fun idea that I thought of the other day. 
What makes the stolen journal so interesting is that in the Dune universe, events occur one way, but are recorded by history and viewed by future humans in a way that is very different from how they actually occurred. This is, of course, a reflection of real life. This idea is also brought up in the book Children of Dune, after Leto first merges with the Sand Trout and begins his metamorphosis. This is one of my favorite short quotes in the whole series. I am no longer human. The legends about this night will grow and magnify it beyond anything recognizable by the participants, but it will become truth, that legend. An event occurs, and time makes it into something else. Eventually, humankind's memory of an event, no matter how distorted, becomes as true as the real event itself. The journals are Leto's secret history of the universe, an attempt to maybe in some way correct this. I think the idea of the journals is a fascinating concept, one of countless fascinating concepts found in the Dune Saga. For more videos about the Dune books, check out the Dune playlist linked in the description.